Hello and thank you for joining us on this edition of Your City in 5. I'm your host, Ricky Saias, working from home. The El Paso Department of Public Health is using every tool available to get senior adults registered to get the COVID-19 vaccine as it becomes available. The biggest challenge right now is registering seniors who are not tech savvy, don't have access to the internet, or don't have a smartphone. Public Health has COVID-19 education teams visiting underserved neighborhoods door to door. The team is registering older adults on the spot and answering questions. There's also a pilot program underway that is registering seniors who are part of the meal distribution program at city-run senior centers. Staff hand out meals, then sign up seniors who have not registered for the vaccine. Public Health has also designated the Don Haskins Recreation Center on High Ridge in West El Paso as a COVID-19 vaccination center for what's known as super seniors. People 75 and older can get vaccinated faster at this location. The first COVID-19 response clinic is up and running in downtown. Your City and 5 correspondent Pedro Partida shows us the vital services it's providing to our community. So right now we're at the COVID vaccine clinic. So what this clinic is right now, what we're doing is we actually help the elderly. So anyone that doesn't have access to a computer or who doesn't have access to, to being able to call or they can't wait an hour and a half on the phone, they go ahead and they can go ahead and come in here and we can actually get them scheduled and registered for their vaccine. Yeah, so it used to be the old Regis Bernard Furniture Building, I believe. Um, we're on the corner of First and Stanton. I was walking here and I came here because I came here to do my link and I thought that here it was done. And I got into it. No, well, I got into it. I can help you. I have to go to the vaccine. Okay, pass it to the vaccine. There's no charge. It's free. It's all free. They can just walk in. We're open from 10 to 6. Monday through Saturday. So here we're going to have actually five rooms. So we're going to have five rooms where you can actually come in and see an exam. Um, we have a vitals room. We have lots of, we have about five offices. So it's, it's a pretty decent sized building. Nosotros de la tercera batallamos que el internet y que ese que el otro, pues no, pues mire ya, gracias a Dios ya, ya me tocó inscribirme. It's really great that we're here. I, I really do think it's a, it's going to be a positive thing that we're out here. Thank you, Pedro, for that information. The COVID center was paid for with CARES funding, and for now, it's being used to register older adults to get the vaccine. Slowly but surely, the city is getting more vaccines from the state. Right now, seniors, first responders, healthcare providers, and residents 16 and older with at least one medical condition are getting vaccinated. People who received the first dose weeks ago are now being called to get their second dose. While there might be some long lines at city sites, staff are working hard to make improvements. El Paso remains one of the best in the state to distribute the vaccine. As we're seeing this week, our second dose allocations did arrive four days late. This four day delay is the reason why we changed from providing those second dose appointments while we're giving out the first dose. We're unable to provide vaccines if we don't have them. While the rest of the population waits to get vaccinated, public health officials urge everyone to continue wearing a face covering. Watch your distance, avoid large gatherings, and practice good hygiene. Information on COVID-19 is posted on epstrong.org. More local businesses have taken the pledge to safety in an effort to protect the health of employees and customers amid the pandemic. The COVID-19 safety initiative has reached a milestone with more than 1,000 businesses taking part. The program launched in June of last year as a way for local businesses to create and follow additional safety measures to fight off the virus. Business owners can still take a pledge to safety by visiting epstrong.org. The public library hasn't been fully operational in nearly a year because of the pandemic, but that doesn't mean it has stopped serving the public. The library is giving away more than 1,000 new books to children starting February 15th. The books will be distributed at all branches during normal curbside hours. The National Association to Promote Library and Information Services to Latinos and the Spanish-speaking community donated the books. For more information, visit elpasolibrary.org. And did you know that our library is one of the best in Texas? The library received the 2020 Achievement of Excellence in Libraries Award from the Texas Municipal Libraries Directors Association. The library excelled in a variety of categories, including workforce development and programming for adults and families. The public library is one of 56 libraries in Texas to receive that award. 
Congratulations to them. And by the way, this is the second year in a row that the library has received the top honor. The El Paso Zoo welcomed back visitors for the first time in months. And everyone who stopped by so far has been able to meet some of the zoo's newest furry family members. Five Mexican gray wolves were transported from Phoenix just last month as part of continued conservation efforts to keep them from extinction. Two four-year-old parents and three male pups were introduced to the Mexican wolf den at the Chihuahuan Desert exhibit and staff says they've settled in nicely. It's a rare opportunity though for uh, El Pasoans to come see Mexican wolves who used to be native to this area all over the place and are no longer here. And so it's a great opportunity. The whole Chihuahuan Desert really is an opportunity to see what used to be in this area, but the wolves are a great example of that. The end goal is to introduce the species back to its native territory when possible. Since the recovery's program approval in the 1980s, the El Paso Zoo and many others have played an important role in restoring the Mexican wolves population. They say time flies when you're having fun, and well, we're pretty much out of time on this edition of Your City in 5, but you can stay up to date with all city happenings by visiting the city's social media sites. For Nigel Sherman, who's putting together this video at home, I'm Ricky Saias, also working from home. Stay safe, be good to each other, and if you're out in public, remember to wear your mask. We'll see you next time on Your City in 5.